Oh, hey guys. This is the Flat Out Fever podcast. For real this week. For real. For real. Because Jay has some sort of fever like symptoms. The Zika virus, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jay. We love you. <laughs> you might be pregnant. With a I always Zika, thought Zika so. baby. <laughs> <laughs> Name him after me, man. All right. Well, uh, thanks again for watching, guys. Uh, we're here live. It's um, yeah. the 9th of February 2016. It and uh, we got some we got some things to talk about. Yes, we do. Formula One related. Um, I think we thought, well, we didn't think we thought. <laughs> <laughs> we thought this week uh, for the Redditors... A post got popular, title, I'm new to F1, after reading the sidebar, I still have a few questions about things. I've been following Formula 1 for about a year now, and I always have questions. Have lots also, of questions. Like, what the fuck's going on in this so, sport? This is a perfect timing. Perfect. T- uh, testing is coming up in uh, two weeks or so, two mm-hmm. and a half, three weeks. And uh, let's, may I guess, review the teams. Let's go through them. The engines, the drivers. Because it seems that every year there's another team or one less team or a different engine for a different other team. There's, <laughs> there's been, always something going on. It's been quite a few shuffles. Quite a few shuffles for 2016. And uh, let's look at them. What do you want? You want to start from the top and work uh, down? Well, let's, let's start from last year's winner. Let's start. I guess Mercedes would be Mercedes. A, a, okay, a good Okay, so we'll start at the top. So Mercedes. So I guess Mike's gonna pull up some pictures of the teams, the Let's drivers. Do it. And we'll talk about what they're doing. So Mercedes has been dominating since the engine change in twenty fourteen. They uh I guess they left the sport like way back nineteen fifties. Yeah, like what's kind of like their history? I guess the, so the the fifties they, they stopped and then they just kind of they're like Actually, we like Formula One. Let's get back into it. Well, they came back because they liked the idea of the formula change. We went to this hybrid, turbocharged, oh, okay. battery power, energy harnessing system. Okay. Since since the change, Mercedes has dominated everybody, basically. And uh, I guess a lot of it has to do with Mercedes itself as an auto manufacturer. Mm-hmm. They've been sort of leading with their uh, blue tech cars. Right. Well, they're they're, they're more so um, about uh, like luxury cars and stuff like that, like Mercedes. Yeah, yeah. Like they're, they're, but they're nice. They're, they're Blue Tech, B L U T E C. Okay, that's their sort of hybrid division. They're efficient cars, battery power, energy harvesting. So we got a bunch of pictures up here, and the drivers for this team are obviously Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg. Yeah, they haven't changed. Nico Been talking about me. these guys a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Nico's hit me. Nico's hit me. <laughs> Both of them, I guess, sort of been in the news this week. We were talking about Rosberg last week. Right. That uh, his sort of uh, cheerleader, uh, Berger, Ger- Gerhard Berger, <laughs> <laughs> he says he's, he's pretty sure Nico can still win, still smash Hamilton. Yeah. But only if he gets under his skin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm basically like poke him behind and bother him. Whereas uh, Hamilton... He's set to become one of the highest paid athletes in any sport in uh, the entire world this year. Really? In the top five-ish. Holy like top shit. Top four, top five. How much is he getting paid now? Or was he getting paid? He was in the 20s of millions, I believe. But now he's stepped up like to the 50s of millions. That's unreasonable. I forget the exact number. Yeah, wow. It's, it's crazy. And wow. he negotiated it himself. And then- He fired his dad. <laughs> <laughs> his dad, dad. <laughs> yeah, his dad was his manager since he was like six years old. Oh my god! Something he fired his dad last year. He's like, I have my own, and my own man. How much is uh, Rosberg being paid? Uh, that I don't know. See if you can find actually maybe the salaries for 2015. Yeah. I think most of them have sort of leaked or been guessed. But uh, yeah, Hamilton's going to be one of the highest paid. He was sort of in the news this week too, with some headlines of. Uh, Hamilton's going to dominate the sport for the next seven to ten years, blah, blah, blah. This quote was floating around. But what I think most people missed is that quote came from his father. 
Ooh. It was an interview with his dad. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, um, let's see here. Uh, Rosberg, right there. Combined $55 million across three years. So that was his deal, 2015 to 2017. Oh, my so God. So he'll be renegotiating this year. $55 million for three years. So, you know, close to $20 million a year. But who knows? A lot of these but deals... But that salary, I guess, would mean like he's sort of like the the second... Like he's the... I don't know. I think this year, I think Alonso was the highest paid. See, it looked 40 million a year. Oh, there you go. Vettel, 50 million guaranteed first year. And then 30 million plus bonuses after for his My Ferrari God. deal. That's his Ferrari deal. Oh, He is also four-time world champion. Yeah, he's, he's pretty good. He's four-time <laughs> world champion. Yeah, back to Mercedes. Yeah. Anyway, since 2014, they came in with the hybrid knowledge, dominated everyone. They won... I think 33 out of on two consecutive driver's titles with Mercedes. And uh, Mercedes won the two consecutive of the past 38 races since they've been back. Hamilton's won most of those. He's won constructor's titles. They seem a little more scared this year because Ferrari's hot on their heels. They were the number two team last year. So I guess we'll move on a little bit. Yeah. The two drivers... Sebastian Vettel and Nico Rosberg. Um, oh, sorry, that's why not Nico Rosberg. <laughs> Kimi Raikkonen. Um, the Iceman? The Iceman. There that he was going to lose his seat. There was uncertainty. He didn't actually perform too well in the middle of this past year. Didn't qualify a few times. Rumors towards the middle. Yeah, because when you think of Ferrari, you think of someone that's like... Dominating. You're, yeah, dominating, but like he didn't really see that. What what what, what uh, placement did he get by the end of uh, last year's season? Oh, it's so hard to remember. Yeah, <laughs> there's too <laughs> too many numbers and facts. You can find the chart too. Yeah, let me let me look it up. But uh, I think 2014 that was Ferrari's first winless year since '93. Oh my God, We're going way way back. And their their aim for 2015 was two wins. They got three. They got up on the podium. Yeah. They got up on the podium three times. So, I don't know. I think Mercedes, they, well, they've stated publicly. Reckoning came in fourth. Fourth place. All right. You got a little bit of fear coming out of Ferrari this year, especially since we have sort of uh, touched a few weeks ago on their accusations, I guess is the word, of stealing or hiring away for extra money the right. mercedes engineers yeah some of their top engineers uh as well as the scandal of one of the guys uh left with a thumb drive full of data <laughs> remember you tried, <laughs> tried to steal some stuff so two again two of the highest paid drivers i think part of um kimmy's deal the ice man midway through the year is maybe what some people think affected Vettel the year before was his baby. He had a baby. He's got a baby. Well, that, that changes the person, right? I think it changes everyone, yeah. 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 So Vettel had a horrible year. His last year at Red Bull got, yeah. got beaten by his rookie teammate. Ugh. You know what I mean? Because he had a baby. Yeah. I think that's what it was. It's like, well, I don't want to die. Yeah. Right? And leave this kid with millions and millions of dollars. So that's Ferrari. <laughs> Ferrari. <laughs> that's right. For Ferrari's come back. We went in a bit of details last week with their uh, engine reshuffle. They moved some parts mm -hmm. around, split the intercooler for the turbo. You know, taking some Mercedes cues, I assume. And um, I don't know. I think some of the teams are scared of them this year. Yeah. Let's see what they can do. Uh, Williams, third place last year. Uh, kind of like a middle of the pack top of the middle of the pack top of the top of the midfield teams they're not a factory team so mm -hmm. they're the top non-factory team what do you mean factory team so they don't make their own engine uh okay. whereas you know mercedes ferrari, ferrari renault yeah factory teams and honda mclaren right are a works team they're not they're vehicle man two two vehicle manufacturers but mm -hmm. honda's not making the car mclaren's not making the engine that's kind of weird Two car companies and they're just like, nah. Yeah, double put their brains together. So yeah, Williams is uh Sorry, British. Uh, who's uh Williams's um engine? Uh they are gonna be running Mercedes this year. This year and last year they did 
Mercedes also. Oh, okay. So they're, I guess you could call them a family team. Mm -hmm. Sir Frank Williams, uh, knighted Brit. Uh, he's, uh, he's been running the team since, geez, I don't know, the mid-80s, I guess. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of success back then with a Honda Engine. And uh, Frank Williams is super old now, but his daughter he's managed to keep it in the family. His daughter, Claire Williams, team principal, and uh, managed to keep the team running at the front. It's uh, power. What, what's that? Power. Oh yeah, yeah. She looks like she could run something. Yeah, look at her face. Pull her face up. <laughs> yeah, she that. looks like uh, a boss. <laughs> yeah, got the out. boss hair boss haircut that's it that's it she takes no shit from no one yeah two drivers they have uh felipe massa will be driving again this year who's uh he comes back from the ferrari days he was alonso's teammate back at ferrari been with um be been with williams now since 2014 they'll be his third year and valtteri bottas is a much younger driver uh, also been with Williams since 2014. Bring up his face. Yeah, there he is. Whoa, look at that guy. And uh, <laughs> I guess you wouldn't call him a, a rookie anymore, but not exactly a vet either, but he's give, been giving Massa some Seasoned. runs for his money. Sorry? Seasoned? Yeah, I guess this is his third year, third year in F1, third year with uh, with Williams. And uh, I don't know. We'll see how they do. He did. He had some bad luck last year. Mm -hmm. He was taken out twice, I guess, by Ferrari. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. Not oh, good. man. Yeah, knocked out. Um, I don't know. I think good things to come from these guys this year, especially mm -hmm. at the end of the year. They made a step up and uh, sort of they sort of promised yeah, to yeah, continue totally. that. Yeah. Next up, next team, Red Bull Racing stepped down they were the four year in a row champions mm -hmm. and then what happened they just uh renault sort of fell off when the when the engine formula changed oh so they right. were at the at the end four years in a row they dominated the v8 mm -hmm. the v8 engine and uh when they switched to the turbo renault renault sort of fell off so this year again they get the the two dannys the two dannys daniel kviat and Daniel Ricciardo, oh my God. the Australian. So they're actually powered by Tag Heuer this year. Tag Heuer. <laughs> the rebranded Renault engine, which, uh, as we now know, is the exact same engine as the Renault engine. <coughs> same engine, same hardware, same software, same everything except for the sticker. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, their chassis is strong. They they managed to challenge at some of the uh, less power intensive tracks l last year, but I don't know. I think them like Renault, not expecting a lot this year, but I guess just trying to make a step this year to mm -hmm. challenge challenge going forward. So I don't know. I guess we'll have to really was, wait and see. Was Red Bull the last team? Uh, to win a championship that wasn't a factory uh, team? Uh, yeah, because yeah, because Mercedes has won the last two years. Right. So up till 2013, they were winning 2000. I think it was uh, 9, no, 10, 11, 12, and 13. They won four years in a row. Holy shit. <laughs> that, that kind of <laughs> blows my mind, actually, but, that a, a non-factory team would... Ha would be su have such a commanding lead but it's kind of weird because there was no Renault factory team for those few years Renault stepped back oh really yeah they, I think in 08 08 they stepped out of the sport so Red Bull sort of was their factory team it uh, was their focus their focus team anyways they, oh I they see okay. kind of like how Honda McLaren is now okay more or less okay so uh, and also there was Infinity Red Bull and uh, Infinity is a Nissan uh, Nissan brand which is partnered with Renault mm. in the car manufacturing world. But so Ren Renault's coming coming back this year with their own team, which is Red Bull talked a lot of shit about Renault last year. So which is sort of how the Tag Heuer deal came around. <laughs> but 
I know this, that happens a lot in this sport. It's yeah, just, people like a the, lot of shit talking. And a lot of drama, not a lot of action. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Red Bull, I don't think they're expecting a lot this year. Publicly, they've stated they probably are expecting to take a step backwards in performance this year. Transitioning. I don't know. So I guess we'll have to see. Next team up, uh, let's talk about Renault since we're on the on the subject. Yeah. Um, Lotus last year, a lot of financial trouble, mm-hmm. even with um, Maldonado's money, which sort of disappeared as well because Venezuela as a country is very close to collapse. Yeah. Financial collapse. Pastor Maldonado is from there. Their state-owned oil, oil company was his backer <laughs> to the tune of something like $50 million a year, oh, good Lord. which has sort of disappeared now. He lost his seat. Lotus uh, couldn't even move their equipment from a few tracks. Like There was uh, one race, Bernie Ecclestone uh, bought them lunch because the team had no lunch, no catering was there to, oh to feed their team. <laughs> <laughs> so the Lotus, Lotus, I guess Lotus is really known as the Endstone team. Okay from Enstone in Britain. But they've changed hands back from Genai Capital, which is a financial company that right. owned the team in the background, sold the team back to Renault. We heard for one dollar. What? Yeah, who knows what the real deal is, but that yeah. was their, their public public amount. It's like some sort of prices right shit. It's <laughs> just like, yeah, a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> so they put their, their money on two new drivers for this year, Maldonados out um Jolion Palmer was a British driver 2014 GP2 champion mm. he was world champion in GP2 which is it's pretty good. the series below right below yeah. Formula One he will be racing this year he's actually very tall oh, very really? tall guy what's his name sorry Jolion Palmer I'm not gonna say Jay- <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not Julian. And I hear <laughs> I was Shit. talking about this with Jay the other day actually. It must be annoying with it to the, be this guy being called probably Jolene his whole life. Yeah. It's J O L Y O N. Jolion. Oh, what a weird name. Y O N. It's Oops. A little more odd because he's British. It's not a not really it doesn't sound like a British name. Man, my nose is itchy. And uh, it's the birthday itches. <laughs> oh yeah, it's your birthday. Today. I uh, I'm goddamn thirty years old. <laughs> thirty years old. Right on. Sorry right for right on. Years. <laughs> too old. Is this too old. Yeah, that's the dude. He's got a race seat. And as we went into some big details last week, um Kevin Magnuson. He is also contracted to drive for Renault. Right, we talked about him last time, right? Right. So the Renault car launched this past week as well, their new vehicle. But after the huge launch event, we can pull that up too. Oh, yeah, right. After the huge launch event, they showed us beautiful looking uh, so Renault one, all it? in black. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, what it's called Renault? the RS16. So I think the, the team has changed its name from Lotus to Renault Sport F1, I believe is their new official official team name. Oh. So anyone, but you were, yeah, anyone you were saying this is not it. Sorry? This is not it. This is this won't be it. Yeah, I was exactly. like, this is it. Ah, just kidding. Ah, yeah, for for the people watching or the people that aren't, Google the car. But a day or two after this big launch, they did this online. Uh, Carlos Ghosn is there, who's the CEO of Renault, not just the F1. Um, Cyril Abitibul is there, who is the so Renault Sport team leader, I guess. The, he's in charge of the engine last year. He had to deal with all that Red Bull mm-hmm. bullshit talk. A day or, anyways, a day or two after they launched this car and livery and sponsors and drivers, this huge event online, yeah. they said, oh, yeah, by the way, that's not actually the RS-16. <laughs> this isn't the car you'll be seeing on track, nor is that our livery. <laughs> the car won't be black. It might not have any yellow on it. I like this car a lot. It does look very cool. Yeah. But I think it's kind of probably they want to step away more from what lotus was right because they they were like a black and gold black and gold yeah right okay this this is black and yellow uh like a bumblebee some argument i heard at first was that they painted it black just to kind of uh hide the curves a bit from the camera and you can see the engine cover is not even painted it's just flat black which one the back part 
Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's not. They didn't even paint it. It's just either I can't. It's hard to tell from the picture if it's flat black or just plain carbon fiber. Yeah. But. Oh, I think I see what you see. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. At first, the rumor was that they it's painted here. Yeah, that they painted it black just to kind of hide the contours and uh, not give away too much before testing, but. The next day they said, yeah, this isn't our car at all. <laughs> this is like, ah, nah. Yeah, so I guess they, maybe they ran out of uh, whatever the shiny stuff is they mix in the paint. I don't know. But them themselves have come out and said, you know, we're making some progress on the engine. We can focus now. We're building yeah. this for ourselves. Oh, wow. We've got Red Bull to help us develop. We're going to be putting a very competitive budget in to this engine. Sorry, guys. And... They also said don't expect them to be anywhere near the top until after 2017. <laughs> so the thing is they've switched their car and chassis is not changing a lot, but they have switched engine. So they have to deal with putting the new engine, a Renault engine, in a car that was Mercedes powered last year. Right. So I don't know. It's, now, it's, is that it's so a, up in the air. Is that so, like such a big difference? Like... Uh like in terms of like the size and dimensions of others' engines, like a Ferrari engine versus a Mercedes engine, versus whatever these guys got. I think let, let's come back to this. Okay, because that let's, seems. I want to do okay. a s- little separate segment today because a lot of actually a lot of info is leaked about a lot of the engines, but I think at least in dimension that the Renault and the Mercedes engine are the closest to each other. Oh, okay. In overall dimension. Okay. Um. Okay, we're getting towards closer to the bottom of the pack, I guess. Okay. I don't know. Let's look at Force India. All right, cool. We also looked pretty deep at these guys about two weeks ago because there was uh, some big news that one of their financial backers is in jail. Oh, yeah, that's right. Some sort of (laughs) land deal pyramid scheme that he's tried to pull off in India. He owes a shitload of money. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name. I could look back quickly at my notes and yeah. find it. But basically, he had owned him and the other owner. Um, yeah, pull him up for a second. Let's just do owner here. Yeah. Let's just look at this guy. Sorry for a second. Yeah, Sorry for a second. He looks like a boss. He does. Find, find a picture of him with the mohawk. <laughs> Anyways, they both own about 47% <laughs> of the team. But the Sahara owner... This is where the, the, the team name Sahara, the, the Sahara owner is in jail. He's being forced to give up his his oh, that's ownership right. in the team to pay back a lot of the money he owes. He's bankrupt and I don't know. I, th- I think he's in the hundreds of millions of dollars in the hole, which I don't know. There was a good spot to be in. <laughs> yeah, this team's had a lot of bad bad luck. They, they're, they're mentioning that... Uh, they were going to have an Aston Martin sponsorship this year. The team might have been Aston Martin powered or named, but they backed out early. It's funny because they, the 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 2015 uh, driver standings, they they were middle of the pack, pretty yeah. pretty high up actually. They made a huge step forward this past year, and especially Fifth, I guess, yeah, especially Sergio Perez. Yeah, uh, he seemed extremely comfortable, especially towards the end of the year. He's sort of. Come into his own. I can't find the guy's name. Doesn't matter. He's the owner of Sahara. He's in jail. Seems like an asshole. And I think a lot of oh, yeah. Indian people hate him now for uh, partially ruining their country, I guess, the <laughs> finances of their country. The two drivers, the other one, of course, Nico Hulkenberg. Uh, he finished 10th in the standings last year and uh, also won the Le Mans 24 hour race. He won it. Yeah, he was one of the winners. Wow. But this year, there's been some controversy that the Azerbaijan European Grand Prix in Baku yeah. is going to overlap with the Le Mans 24 hours. Right, we talked about that last time. Right. And when you really look at it, Formula One, Bernie, and the European Grand Prix organization group did it on purpose to make sure that some of the F1 drivers could not compete there. Oh, wow. Because it takes away attention from the race. It's It's petty. Yeah. This is what billionaires do, though. Ugh. Yeah, it's pretty Gross. shitty. Yeah, so a lot of people are mad and just saying yeah. they're going to watch the Le Mans 24 hours out of spite. <laughs> but it's like, I think it's the qualifying of... The race is so long, it's 24 hours. Right. The qualifying of 
the Formula One European Grand Prix yeah. overlaps with the start, the green flag of the Le Mans 24 hours, and the end of the race the next day, which has been moved to a sunset race to yeah, light right. the track. The end of the race the next day is going to end overlapping with the checkered flag of the Le Mans 24 hour day, race. Oh my God. Yeah, so they make qualifying overlaps the start. <sighs> The race overlaps the end. Some petty shit going on here. Yeah, it's kind of dumb. And Sergio Perez, like we just said, he uh, he had a great year. Got a lot of press himself. Mexican Grand Prix gave him a huge boost. It was great for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. He finished actually ahead, ninth ninth place, yeah. twenty fifteen. And uh, I don't know, Force India just I don't know, keeping their heads down this year. Yeah. As far as the media so far, anyways. Yeah, you don't really hear much from them. Yeah, I think they have some financial trouble. As strong as their driver lineup is, I think they're just hoping they can pull some performance. They got some interesting there. color choices. I guess it's yeah. They've actually changed changed their colors quite a few times oh, in the really? past few years. But yeah, the, the Indian colors: the uh, yeah. white, white, green, and orange. Cool. Yeah, so I, 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 I dig it. I dig it. Yeah, I've been behind this team. Oh, 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 scroll down a little bit. There's a great picture right there. A little more, a little more, a little more, a little. Right there. There we go. That's, That's a hairdo. <laughs> oh, yeah. VJ, with the, the ponytail and the mohawk. <laughs> oh, man. <gasps> VJ Malia. Sorry, his, his name had his name had slipped my mind. Oh, that's hilarious. He's Mr. Kingfisher. <laughs> uh, Toro Rosso. Toro Rosso this year. Um... I guess they're in, I think they've been maybe the least in the media of any team mm-hmm. so far this year. Coming going yeah, going into the year. Uh they're gonna be powered by Ferrari this year. Interesting. But the twenty fifteen Ferrari. The tw- oh the old one. Yeah, last year's. What is sorry, what's so, their relationship again with Red Bull? Uh they're same owners. Oh really? They're Italian based. So Toro Rosso uh, is a Red Bull in Italian. <laughs> toro Toro, that's a, that's that's the bull, and Rosso is the color red. Oh, funny. So they are the Italian-based Red Bull team, owned by the same owners. I guess it makes sense they would go with the Ferrari then. Yeah, um, I guess sort of somewhat genius, somewhat devious. Even though there's FIA is fairly strict on sharing data and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's changed a bunch of times between Red Bull and the Toro Rosso, but they've changed the engines as teams. Toro Rosso more than Red Bull, but a lot of people think or speculate anyway that Red Bull with Toro Rosso, their sister team using a different engine, allows them to sort of look at both. Yeah. They look really close at the yeah. other engines. <laughs> so it's going to, I don't know, people are thinking maybe Renault is going to get some stuff off the 2015 Ferrari. But as we said earlier and last week, Ferrari's expected to come back with a almost completely different engine this mm-hmm. year. So who knows what they could glean from that, uh, from their old design. But these guys are most likely going to be midfield. They have a strong chassis, mm-hmm. but who knows? Max Verstappen, the 17 year old, the 18 year old. He's 18 now. He's 18 now. He's 18 now. Oh my god. He uh he actually came in 12th last year. He uh yeah. I don't wow. know, he he did very well. His teammate came in 15th, Carlos Sainz. And uh yeah, I don't know, his, I don't know, Max Verstappen probably the guy with the most promise. Mm-hmm. He's got the longest career in front of him as yeah. well. He's 18 years old. <laughs> Just crazy. A lot of guys are still in go-karts or yeah. the the mid mid-level series at that age. Yeah, it's really crazy. Um, Manor, Manor Marusha. Well, I think the uh, Marusha has totally been dropped this year from the title. Oh, really? They sort of, I don't know. I think, I don't know. They might race on TV as MRT or something we talked about last week. Yeah. Or at least that's what they're calling their car. Some oh, news is the Airbnb guys. That's the Airbnb right. guys, right? If if you look the picture beside it, that's how they started the 2015 season with zero sponsors, Ugh. orange and white car. By the end of the year, they had a handful of sponsors and so, a disclaimer text. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the iTunes uh, 
copyright and disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Something interesting. They've had quite a few shuffles with, uh, we talked about the two top guys from the team had left a few yeah. weeks ago and stuff. But some big news coming out of them. This year, they're going to be powered by a Mercedes engine. Oh, wow. Which should uh, probably boost them up a few places if they and could get the power sorry, on the road. Who who were they? Who was their engine before that? Uh, they were running... Uh, man, too, too many details. <laughs> so sorry, man. <laughs> oh, no, no, I need to apologize. They were running... Oh, my God. I don't know, man. You got you to look it up. Will do. They, I don't know. These are the guys, though. They had a death. Gio Bianchi died in, oh, that's right. in their car. Some positive news this week, though. They've started an endurance racing team. So they're going to be competing in the uh, endurance races, the 6, 12, and 24-hour races. They've changed their logo big time. This is their new Marusha Mana Racing logo. Kind of looks like uh, th- this one on the left here. They got a flower now. The left kind of looks like a cobra or something, yeah. like a snake M, I guess. They got rid of those little wings coming off the team. But, uh, or sorry. <clears throat> There's a logo. This one here? Man, they've changed it so many times. They've changed the name of the team. It was Marusha, then Manor Marusha. Now it's Manor. It's a bit crazy. Well, hopefully they can get some stability going, I guess, for themselves. Because it, it has been crazy. The Their lineup, too, is not locked down. Um, Roberto Merhi, who drove quite a few races for them last year, uh, pff, he finished 19th in the standings, didn't race the last few races, and was, excuse, excuse me, his last few races were replaced. He was replaced by Alexander Rossi, the mm-hmm. American. Yeah. Which a lot of people were hoping Alexander Rossi, the American, was going to race for Haas, the mm. American team. But uh, he's still rumored. Manor actually hasn't announced any of their drivers for this year. Uh oh. But Pascal Verline, um, another promising young driver, I guess you'd call him, also rumored. Stoffel Van Dorn, also rumored. He was actually the GP2 champion last year mm. for 2015. And. Probably one of the strongest ru- rumors was uh, fourth place GP2 finisher last year, Rio Harianto, the Indonesian guy. He has his country's government behind him and I think would make him the first Muslim Formula One driver. Oh, crazy. That, that matters. But he's, he's, he's Indonesian. It's between these four guys, though. So I guess it's going to come down to the wire. There's only two weeks left, really, to lock the seats down. I guess mm-hmm. the... The uh, the deadline for them is the first oh, pra- you, the you, first practice. But you have to lock in your drivers for the for the year. Well, no, not really. But they w- they want you they to. want us. The drivers want to. Well, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to have and for the team it makes sense to have consistency, right? You have a guy that is sitting in the car, used to it, yeah, used to the team, used to everybody. Right. Okay. So. I guess the four drivers are the strongest. Rio Harianto, again, Alexander Rossi, the American, Pascal Verlein, and Stoffel Van Dorn, who was the champion in GP2. He seems like a strong contender. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for some reason, I guess because of all their shuffling, there's. if you go to their website too, actually, the Manor site, there's almost nothing there. So I guess they've been busy. They've been busy. And finally, Haas, Haas F1. Mm-hmm. <sighs> The new American team. H-A-A-S. H-A-A-S, yes. Uh, They raced in American racing sports for a long time. Proved themselves. Haas Automation is a huge, huge company that makes... um, uh, What's it called? Metal machining tools. Like a tool and die sort of thing? Tool and die machines, yeah. Metal forming machines. Some of the best in the world some of the most precise they actually power now i believe the ferrari factory all the machines are haas oh crazy and ferrari powers haas they've sort of it's a symbiotic relationship yeah they've (laughs) sort of um i guess it exploited the rules in a way but haas has partnered with ferrari and every part that is possible and legal for them to take to use for themselves has been 
taken and used for themselves. Whoa. Their engine, uh, they'll be running. They'll be running the new engine and basically everything possible. It's almost like a partnership. Um, two drivers have experience. Romain Romain Grosha. He's been his first year in F one. He got a lot of criticism. He was like, uh, I don't know. You'd, you'd almost call him like a mini pastor. Oh, really? he almost killed <laughs> Fernando Alonso. <laughs> He caught, he caught oh, a few accidents. Oh, is that when he almost got hit in the head? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was a bad crash what for anyone an that wants to look it up. <laughs> uh, he finished 11th place last year, one podium, but zero wins. But he's sort of another driver that's come into his own. He's got some experience. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess probably his knowledge of the car and stuff will help the team to, to balance it out. And uh, Esteban Gutierrez... Which kind of like Kevin Magnuson, he drove in 2014, didn't do too well, and sat the year out, kind of like K-Mag, which is right. extremely rare enough one to sit a year out and make it back. He did it, though, but I think he's also got some Mexican money behind him. I'm not some 100%, pesos. but I, yeah, sorry. Some pesos behind him. <laughs> some lots of pesos. One of the richest men in the world. Jesus. He's... Uh, Anyways, two Mexican drivers. They're looking to do extremely well this year, I'm sure. And uh, I don't think a lot of people disagree that with their statements that they're probably going to be near the top of the midfield straight out of the box. That's what they're expecting. We looked at them closer maybe two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. They've got their their trucks ready, their transportation, their toolboxes. They're ready to their go. They're trackside machines. Yeah, they got their team. They got their uniforms. They got some mock-ups of their livery, possible black and gold. Ooh. It's almost like... Uh, Is that a Bud? That's the, this can't be real. Yeah, Budweiser. Texaco Gas they're sponsored by. Wait, is this... See, yeah, we don't know. We don't know. Are they just making shit just up? For the, yeah, just for the people watching. There's been some sort of leaked Haas liveries. And they've sort of released themselves some shadowy pictures of the car. Uh, but a lot of people guessing they're going to be almost like the opposite of last year's Lotus in black and gold. In- right. Ex- okay. Instead, gold and black. Right. Mainly gold right, with right, the black. Right. But I don't know. Maybe maybe Renault's waiting. Or the red tail wing, yeah. I guess, uh, for symbolizing the Ferrari power. But for as far as deliveries, nobody really knows. Yeah. No, nothing has been... We can only speculate. We can only speculate for the next two weeks or so. It's really not that long. What's the, Today's the ninth. So, yeah, practices in two weeks. We really have less than two weeks. We're going to have all the cars, except for the Sauber. Mm-hmm. They're, they're the only team that said their new car will actually not be at the first test. They're going to forego it, miss it, skip it. Oh, we haven't talked about Sauber yet, have we? Uh no, but we don't really need to. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Nor want to. That's fine. Yeah, I think they're right at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. They did not do well last year. They're actually the reason one of our podcast episodes has been pulled from YouTube for copyright violation. Oh yeah. Stupid We're trying to help you guys stoppers. out. Yeah, we we the story is we showed their commercial. Remember? Yeah, I it did. was not a very good commercial. <laughs> Basically, they showed the uh, Sauber F1 car drive a lap around Barcelona. Yeah. And then a close-up of a seagull or something and takes a shit on the car. <laughs> yeah. And then they had like 10 girls in bikinis come out and wash the bird shit off. <laughs> we I'm showed that. We were making fun of it. <laughs> yeah. We made fun of it and showed that commercial like in the background. They pulled our entire podcast episode from YouTube for that 30-second violation if you want to call oh, it that so brutal. they're not even going to be how do they find it let's come on get out of here automatically uh, robot robots anyways they're powered by ferrari as well i believe they'll be driven powered by the 2015 ferrari felipe nazar whose name sounds way too much like felipe massa uh, that was like one of the things that confused me the most when i first started Watching F1 with you guys. Especially with the British yeah. commentators. <laughs> yeah, they the sing British Felipe guys. Massa and Felipe Nasa. <laughs> yeah. You could tell mo- most of the commentators, they've gotten really careful about pronouncing the R. Yeah. Really pronouncing it as yeah. Nazar. Nazar. Nazar, not Nasa. <laughs> it's, it sounds a lot, a lot the same. And uh, Marcus Erickson. 
again, unfortunately for these two guys, you don't hear a lot about them through the year. You don't see them on TV a lot. You don't see their their team. But I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Interestingly, another team with a female team principal, which is awesome for them, mm-hmm. Monisha Kaltenborn. But they had some bad news. They got remember they got sued at the start of last year because oh, they yeah. dropped the driver, didn't want to pay him, caused the big stink. They're not even showing up to the, <laughs> yeah, not showing up to the first practice. Who knows if they'll even make it to the second one with their new car? Jeez. I don't know, man. But a lot of stuff is up in the air. A lot of shuffling around. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Uh, I guess finally McLaren Honda. Yeah, the Mac Honda. Yeah, the Mac Honda. As Jay would like to say. <laughs> well, they deserve 2013 with the uh, with Ferrari. Again, one of the highest paid drivers, but the car didn't perform this year. Yeah, there is talk. And now that's because of the turbo. What was what was mostly? The big... Let again. Let's get right. let's get to the details when we talk about the engine. But okay. yeah, they basically undersized their turbocharger and couldn't get enough electrical power out of it mm. <clears throat> to keep up with the, the rest of the field but the size zero concept the smaller engine they did build seemed to work they got the the coke bottle shape on the car mm-hmm. um but two of the best drivers in the grid at separate points during the year there was talk of jensen button retiring from the sport completely wow or perhaps but probably not retiring from racing, but F1 moving into endurance championship, WEC racing, something like that. Yeah. And there was also talk of Alonso for this year taking some sort of a sabbatical, mm-hmm. which sort of messed with K-Mag's head a little bit too yeah. because he was the reserve driver there. Right. He thought he might be getting a seat. But I guess in the end, I don't know, Alonso's idea was to step back, let one of the younger drivers help develop the car for a year and mm-hmm. come back in 2017 with the new rules with the engine hopefully figured out yeah they had a couple engines blow up remember their twitter oh, yeah. pages <laughs> the, the named <laughs> their what would you call them uh anthropomorphized engines yeah they're yeah. like little All people the, they had like personalities and yeah. everything anyways honda used probably close to double or maybe actually more than double their allotted engines for the year took a shit load of penalties yeah didn't do anything really zero wins zero podiums for the year only a handful of points for the year didn't finish a lot of races didn't qualify no q3s but they're and uh something else that was yasuhisha arai the the honda engine had there's so many uh, titles it's ridiculous (laughs) But he sort of stopped talking to the media about halfway through the year because there was too much. Yeah, he's just like, no. Yeah, he, he's, he talked them up too much, promised right. too much, expected right. wins before the end of the year. None of that happened. McLaren themselves, not happy with the performance of the engine. But unlike Red Bull, they were polite, didn't talk shit throughout mm-hmm. the year. I don't know. I got high hopes for them, though, coming back, possibly with a different livery, some new sponsors. Shandong. Shandon, oh, we got the bottle here the too. Bottle up here. They showed up, showed up to practice with the Shandon logo. We thought, remember, we talked about that yep. is that is one of their big sponsors this year. This is the champagne, but strangely, alcohol advertising is illegal in France, where they did the water, the wet tire testing. Weird. Yeah, so they had. Remember, they had that moon and stars on the side of the car. Oh yeah. But, oh, that's right. But yeah. they showed up with an almost all black car, so I don't know. But they've been promising since last year. They're looking for a new title sponsor. They think it's going to show up. Mm-hmm. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. I don't know. <laughs> Any, anything else? Oh, I think that's it. All right, let's talk about some engines. Okay. And we're back. Dun. Some breaking news. It's coming off the back, the last top, back of the last topic here. Tom F1, one of our dedicated fans, <laughs> he just uh, just sent us a message about Manor, since we were just speculating about their driver lineup. Pascal of Airline, Airline. sometime in the past hour, it's been announced that uh, he's actually been signed as a driver. For oh, one. wow. So there we go. There's one of them, one of the two. <laughs> but who else it could be, we don't know. 
have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mystery. But anyways, let's talk about some uh, <clears throat> engine updates again. There's been quite a bit of uh, news about that this past week. Mercedes, yeah. first of all, the dominant. Most news the about that. Powerful them. Mercedes. Powerful. Powerful, powerful Mercedes. Mercedes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, basically, they've kind of been in the news the most because they've been bragging the most, I guess, this week. Well, but they have how could you not? They're right to brag the most, for sure. Yeah. Um, it's actually mind blowing. So, they they said that at the end of the year last year, mm -hmm. they were peaking around nine hundred horsepower. Oh my god! And they expect to do a fair bit more than that this year, coming into this year. Some some crazy numbers here. They they're coming back with a larger turbo. I'll explain why in a minute. Mm -hmm. Uh, they say they've reached over forty five percent total thermal efficiency on these engines. Which is wow. insane. As I said in, in the last segment, the past two years, but they don't really even need these gains. They've won 32 <laughs> out of the last 38 races, <laughs> which, is, which is insane. Uh, when they announced their new engine last week, mm -hmm. they had a special media presentation. And uh, it's unavailable online, but apparently a chart was shown there that's showing the, uh, the gains they've made in efficiency and power. And they're expecting wow. to put onto the track this year almost the same amount of gain as they came back with last year in 2015 over the 2014. Holy engine, shit. Which is ridiculous. But somehow they're still scared of Ferrari. Well, maybe because Ferrari stole some of their engineers. <laughs> um, so ju just some numbers here that came from motorsport.com. In in. The last year of the V8 engine, thermal efficiency for sorry, the Kerr's power reaching the crank was about thirty nine percent, right? Last year was about eighty five in twenty fourteen. Twenty fifteen reached ninety five percent of the power. Holy shit! And who knows what they got this year? They're not gonna release that. So that's the power from fifteen percent. That's that's it. <laughs> <laughs> the the energy yeah they might go over 100 <laughs> the energy from the crank from the mguk that reaches the crankshaft yeah. to the tires 95 percent wow and some separate numbers in 2007 the first year that kurs was tested and yeah. announced we're going to bring this into the sport the kurs system then when it was still attached to the v8s mm -hmm. weighed 107 kilos and did about 39 percent efficient in 2014 they had gotten it down to 24 kilos right holy shit. less than a quarter of the weight at 80 percent last year they had knocked it down to 20 kilos the 95 percent number we just talked about wow so it's probably lighter now and probably more efficient yeah. they're not going to be sharing any of that well no Why they've also talked for the mercedes drivers on the road that it's not going to be as long as you might think for a lot of this technology to reach road cars, which is probably good for their their vehicle numbers. Yeah, totally. And that the total thermal efficiency, sorry for all these numbers, but it's it's actually ridiculous. Total thermal efficiency, basically the heat generated from burning that gas that yep. gets turned into horsepower and reaches the road because a lot of it turns into heat and right. noise. And a noise. lot of that noise that disappeared. With the V8s, they're at 29%. So you had like 71% of every piston explosion yeah. was heat and noise wasted. Wow. Right? Wow. They reached 40% last year and 47 for 2015. So they're almost half at half, wow. which is crazy, which is why the cars are a lot quieter. Yeah. So it's because they're using up all that energy, that wasted energy. Con converting it. Converting, converting it. it. The MGUH and the MGUK, the heat and the kinetic energy. Mm-hmm basically there's almost like there's three steps you burn the engine burns gas yeah creates heat creates spinning energy yeah the mguh recovers a lot of that heat from the turbine mm -hmm. and the mguk recovers a bunch of the kinetic energy from the car under braking right and from okay. slowing the turbo right turns it into battery power a lot of that is wasted in heat through the electrical cables through right. spinning through okay. friction it has to get to the battery, and then it has to get after from the battery 
back out through the electric motor, which is attached to the crankshaft, mm -hmm. out to the tire and into the road. Right? So the percentage we're talking about is from gas being burnt, turned into heat, noise, yep. turbo, turbine spinning. That gets recovered into the battery some gets wasted as it charges as the battery it, right. you know like your phone gets hot when you charge it right yeah. like my phone's yeah. getting kind of warm right now it's charging yeah, yeah. that's wasted energy that's losing Ow. efficiency and then when you use your phone like so if you if you start filming a video or yeah. play some crazy games on your phone you know it gets really hot and you're yeah. like Man, my phone's melting <laughs> that's the other side of the thermal efficiency okay so mercedes has figured out how to get rid of a lot of that so but efficient so efficient germans right germans <laughs> the crazy thing is though like these engines are going over a thousand degrees celsius that's how much energy is coming out of the brakes burning gas like there's a lot a lot a lot of heat to dissipate through the intercoolers oh my God. that's where mercedes is at kicking kicking ass but anyways they, st they say they're still afraid of ferrari sure um, ferrari's determined they yeah. did better than they expected last year right last year they, they said we expect to get Two podiums. They got three. Um, now, why would they say that? Like, why would they? Did they just know they weren't in a, the best position possible? Like, you right, think the you, year before they got none? Ugh. Yeah, like, like we said earlier, that was their worst season since 1993. Oh, that's right. Wow. Yeah. So that's when they shuffled up their team principal yeah they, they moved some engineers around they brought some new people in they took some old people out mm. they got sebastian vettel on board to help develop the car yeah um <clears throat> which i think they've done a lot they've changed we, we won't get into it now but they've right. changed the whole geometry of their front suspension oh, okay basically moved a lot of stuff around actually if you go to the links today can you pull up the ferrari link oh, i sent you a link uh ferrari's layout we did look at this a couple of weeks ago, but it's worth looking at quickly again now. Is it in the docs? Yeah. It's in the uh, the links page. Okay, I gotta find it. Hold on. Give me a second. So last year they had their their uh MGUK outside the engine and they had their intercooler above the engine. This year they or sorry, in in the V, in the V of the engine. This year they moved everything forward split the intercooler for the mguh which i guess they believe is going to bring them a lot more efficiency and moved the mguk forward about two feet which brings the center of gravity lower and towards the center um you uh, got that you talking about this one yeah that's the one so for the people watching basically the the middle and the top picture compares the two the two cars and they've moved their clutch apparently in you can't see it in this picture but right. they moved their clutch inside the transmission which again is bringing their engine a lot more compact mm -hmm. not exactly honda's size zero but it's a lot more compact than it was and brings their center of gravity a lot more closer to the center than it mm -hmm. was so i don't know they're they're pushing but I don't know. They're, I don't think they're super optimistic, right? Because they they haven't made any predictions this year, not like last year. Uh, they haven't set any expectations for themselves, at least publicly. Right. Still pushing. Interestingly, though, um, teams are allowed a filming day, or maybe I think two filming days a year, up to 100 kilometers. Yeah. Which, I guess, they sort of get away with it as a second testing type thing. Okay. So Ferrari <laughs> has announced that they've scheduled a filming day f in Barcelona for the day before testing kicks off. Oh, weird. So essentially, they're going get to get a day early on the track than everyone else with about 100 kilometers of, of room to Crafty. drive the car. Crafty. Crafty, indeed. Wow. So <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what they're, what they're doing there or what they're planning to do, but Obviously, they plan to get some advantage out of that. One of the mm -hmm. craftier teams. That's but pretty clever. Critically, they I guess as of coming off of last year, they've got the rules to be changed to where they're allowed to provide a previously homologated engine to another team. 
Okay. Which previously the rules said every team, so say Ferrari sells an engine, it's got to be the same engine that they pr- use themselves. Right. Okay. I see. But critically, the software doesn't have to be the same. Oh, okay. But last year they sort of set precedent for a loophole that they don't have to do that, which is why they're giving last year's engine to Toro Rosso. And okay. They're like, eh, try to keep up with this. <laughs> Come on. But, yeah, we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Ferrari's been involved in a little controversy with this new engine, though, because they've hired away a bunch of engineers from Mercedes, mm-hmm. taking some of their ideas, some of their top guys' top ideas. So I don't know. We'll see what they can do. What, what is the? Because that seems shady to me. It seems like a little weird to me. Yeah. Like why? W- it's not in the rules, though. So it's, it's not in the rules. But I mean, like. I'm. I feel like it's a little like under underhanded. You know, like does the FIA or any any other organization within Formula One like like they look at it? They're like, oh, what are you guys doing? What's going on here? Yeah, Is there anything well, like that? You're an outsider racing. You don't know. Nobody's quit stopping you from quitting your job, switching jobs, mm-hmm. moving to a competitor for more pay. For I suppose you're right. Maybe a little yeah, more no. pay if you yeah. if you show up with a thumb drive with some. CAD files and pictures on it. I don't know, <laughs> but I don't know. It's kind of up in the air. They've uh, not a lot of announcements coming from them. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So we'll see. Honda, the third most newsworthy engine, I suppose. There was some rumors floating around that they've possibly found up to two hundred twenty-three horsepower. Oh, they just found a bunch of horses in the engine. Found them, yeah. They're just <laughs> laying around. <Those> wild horses. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to say how founded those numbers are. Yeah. Partly because the number is so specific, yeah. two hundred twenty-three horsepower. Yeah. But you know, I could pull a random number out of my ass too. Yeah. <laughs> part of the, well, not part of the main, the big criticism of Honda last year was they were so adamant that their size zero packaging was the thing to do. They put their turbo, turbocharger, and engine compressor between the v of the v6 right to make everything compact whereas like if you look at the ferrari the blue and the red there is their turbocharger and compressor they're hanging off the back of the engine but you can imagine if you didn't have that space hanging off the back of your engine how much smaller it would be yeah right but how much smaller the turbo and compressor themselves would have to be Mm -hmm. if you try to fit them between the v Mm But now there's, there's always there's the, there's rules and dimensions of the whole car in general though that they have to sort of abide by. Yeah, the height, the width, but there's no or not like within that you can just pretty much do whatever you want. Right. Yeah. Okay. If you look at the four engines, they're actually very different. Mm-hmm. The Mercedes, the Ferrari, the Honda, and, and the Renault. Mm. Probably the Honda is the most different though because of their size zero. But their philosophy was that they would put a smaller turbocharger between the v Mm. and spin it faster than all the other teams spun their larger turbos okay and get the same sort of boost out of it but it didn't work that way for them didn't work out right as i said i I have no power i have no power (laughs) from what i said at the start going back to mercedes for a second they've enlarged their turbo every year for the past this is their third iteration of the engine they've Mm -hmm. enlarged it every year so what happens is with a turbo though, you have a turbocharger, the exhaust gas spins the turbo, the turbo spins the compressor, which pressurizes the pistons, pushes air into the engine, pressurizes the pistons, which makes a bigger explosion because you put more pressure in each piston. Each time the piston comes up and down, makes a bigger explosion, which pushes hotter and more exhaust out the exhaust which turns the turbine faster, right. which turns the compression, compressor faster, which puts more boost into the engine. That's how, you, that's how a turbo works. And when you get too much pressure then for the engine to handle, that's what the blow-off is. Oh, okay. And that's where our second exhaust comes from this year. That blow-off is its own separate exhaust. Oh, okay, I remember that. So, yeah, so the turbo builds up as much pressure as it can handle, and the blow-off sends the extra air out. Right. So, Honda's idea, like I said, was to spin it faster than everyone else. There's actually no regulation on the speed of the turbocharger can, that the turbocharger can spin. Right. But there sort of is. I only actually learned this this weekend. The ERSH, which the energy recovery system for the off the heat, 
which in all these engines is basically a spinning generator Mm -hmm. attached to the shaft of the turbo okay spins this all right the limit for that ersh is 125,000 rpm so unless you go crazy complicated and put like a transmission on your turbine shaft yeah that's more or less the max your turbo can spin but the size can be any size this turbo boost creates it's called a back pressure it's like a vacuum suck okay in in the exhaust of the engine coming out of the piston the idea of the turbo though is that it creates more boost off the compressor okay than vacuum off the back of the turbine okay so it's supposed to create more benefit than detriment (laughs) right okay yeah honda didn't get this right (laughs) honda did not get this right mercedes got it right and the thing is, the reason the turbo has gotten bigger is because their efficiency has gotten so much higher. When your efficiency gets bigger, better, you can pull more energy off the turbo, okay. which means you can put more energy into the turbo system because you're getting more of it out. Right. It's not getting wasted, and you're not slowing down your pistons with the turbo, even though they're more powerful explosions. Mm-hmm. It's just about efficiency, really. It's all about efficiency. Yeah. Honda says this year, they're, they're still going with the size zero. Their mm-hmm. turbine and compressor are still between the V. Mm-hmm. But they say that they're about, the turbo this year is about the same size as Mercedes was when they debuted their engine. Oh. So who knows? Yeah. So on the big tracks, Honda finished almost two laps back on Spa. Um I think in in uh, Singapore they did really badly because those are the tracks where you need a lot of full throttle, mm-hmm. and these engines rely on the energy recovery, yeah. which Honda wasn't recovering enough energy to put back into their engine to keep up. Huh. According to GPS analysis, though, they're only about forty horse down on Mercedes turbine. Aside, if you took out the turbo regulations, yeah, Honda would only be about 40 horsepower back. Oh, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Yeah. But their energy system is so far behind. Mm. Nobody's sure if they can get there or not. Mm. Nobody's sure. Well, I believe. So they believe. They believe. Yeah, let's see. But they, ref- they refuse in Japanese style, Honda style, to hire any help. They won't, they won't take any engineers from Mercedes, try to lure them away. They won't take any from ferrari or Renault to help them out they refuse so yeah honda's main deal is getting the efficiency up on their turbo on, on their the turbo compressor. the turbo system yeah okay the, it's called like it's a turbo loop turbo loop okay exhaust turbine compression yeah explosion goes in a circle wow shit bonkers. it's bonkers so it's, <laughs> it's so crazy yeah it is crazy so crazy yeah and um Renault they had a lot of efficiency problems last mm-hmm. year, a lot of explode remember how many explosions they had, mm-hmm. how many times their engine blew up. So they had the least news. There's almost nothing to to even talk about with them. They had a lot of concentration on switching their team, changing painting all their stuff, yeah. whatever new color twice, I guess, since they pretended well, to be I black mean- for a week. <laughs> <laughs> who knows what color they're coming back start as. listening to hip-hop <laughs> <laughs> yeah who, uh, who knows what they're doing oh, yeah but basically all they've said about their engine mm-hmm. is that they're working on getting the basics which is kind of crazy this is the third year they're working on yeah. getting their basics efficient and reliable working on reliability <gasps> oh my so God. hopefully their engine doesn't blow up yeah <laughs> hopefully they can keep up not become the new mm-hmm. honda but it would be good for the sport if they were the new Honda for this year. Yeah. Less, at least cycle that through. Honda doesn't want to be Honda. Hopefully Mercedes <laughs> actually is scared of Ferrari and not yeah. just trying to hype the sport. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Ugh. We'll see. It's a lot of questions up in the air. Yeah. And uh, I guess let's keep it on the same topic. We don't, we don't have to go to a new video. Crucially, this is just announced yesterday officially. Mm-hmm. The token system. It's gone. It's being abandoned. <laughs> That's what the, uh, <laughs> what the hell? Wait, is that for next year? For next year. For next year. But I'm really glad I didn't really understand it to begin with. Nobody did. <laughs> Nobody understood it. 
I remember we spent like an episode. You guys were telling me all about it, and I was like, "Oh, okay, tokens, cool." Especially at the start of the season, because there was such a big debate about how many tokens is Honda gonna get. They're new. They're yeah. they're a year behind. Yeah. So they ended up getting for this year the balance of the leftover tokens from the other teams. Oh, okay. The idea from the beginning, though, for those that for those of you that don't know, I'm gonna compress this news bit. The entire engine, the power unit, as yeah. it were, which is the engine, the turbo, the compressor, the energy systems, 66 tokens. If you want to change every part, there were 66 tokens. Okay. The idea from two years ago was to allow 32 tokens worth of change, right? Right. Coming into 2015, the teams, the three teams that were returning yeah. outside of Honda decided not to spend all of their tokens going into the year and part of the regulations that were put into the book was that there was going to be no in-season development the reason the token system was introduced in the first place was to lower the cost of development because teams were spending in hundreds of millions yeah. unlimited money just developing and developing and developing engine forever right and more or less people had thought that the v8 was reached the max of its efficiency a lot of parts were locked down they weren't allowed to change them mm -hmm. so they went to a new system now There's was this uh, on top of that was the token system sort of implemented so that it was fair for smaller teams to compete yeah that as well and for part of the token system along with the energy efficient hybrid engine was to attract new manufacturers mm -hmm. we almost had volkswagen audi in but Unfortunately, they had that entire international scandal involving oh, emissions and their sucks. road cars. But that would this, have been cool to see that team. It would have been really cool. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe they can straighten that out and come back in a year or two. Mm. But the, the idea of all this was to lure more manufacturers back in because mm. they were down to three. It worked. Honda joined. Honda came back. And uh, last year, all the teams unanimously decided to throw out that concession and yeah we're just going to de develop throughout the season <laughs> they all held on to tokens and oh, fuck. sorry guys what happened nothing what happened uh <laughs> yeah it's so ridiculous so all the teams developed through the season pushed their engines yeah ended the season decided we're gonna go with 32 tokens again I believe it was supposed to be reduced this year. They all wanted 32. Sorry. Sorry. We're yeah. fine. It's fine. They all wanted 32, came back, and last week decided, let's just scrap the token system completely. <laughs> completely. So I don't know what Honda thought about that, because probably part of them being lured back in, yeah. allowing themselves to be lured back in, yeah. making statements that they'd never leave, was because of this money saving money saving system and <clears throat> energy recovery engineering that they're going to perform that they can sell to the public and their civics and stuff like that right now do you think they're going to talk to bernie or at all like to be like listen this maybe, is why we got into it and maybe like, that's maybe that I'm was the dark lord <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe they want unlimited development um Adri a couple of quotes i guess like if this has been a story this week probably the only real story adrian Nui, the aero big aero aerodynamics dude over at red bull mm -hmm. he assumes this is going to cause a spending war but the thing is from during the season last year arai yasuhisha arai yeah the honda engine guy he basically argued that the tokens don't cause the spending to go down at all mm. because so think of it this way you have an engine and yeah. you want to change your pistons are no good you want to change your pistons yeah pistons cost like five tokens okay. so you say okay we have to change the pistons we have more than five tokens left let's change them you those tokens are only spent once you put those pistons in front of the fia for homologation right okay once they're homologated that means you're using that on the track. You can't use anything else. You can't go backwards. That's your engine. Right. Those are the parts that have to be in there when you race now. Right. But the thing is, you don't show anybody 
the those other new pistons, pistons right, right, right. until you perfected them. Right. So still, you're making 10 or 15 designs. You're running your supercomputer, right. testing out It really doesn't shapes. change anything. Yeah, more or less doesn't. Because you're still spending money on development and research on these things right. until you've picked something you like. And there's no in-season road testing, so you can't even test those parts. It's actually worse. Or well, That was his argument. It's actually yeah. worse in some ways because you test them out in your warehouse on your dyno yeah you put that in the car and maybe it doesn't run the way you expected it to yeah and wow. either way you don't just say like oh, i got the perfect piston you make mm-hmm. it throw it in you be like it maybe it didn't work whoops you try all the designs yeah. as many now, as when, you would have anyways when did uh, this token system come into play with the new engines 2014 right what did you guys originally think about them like what was your first i thought it was all right there weren't with the V8s. There weren't exactly tokens, but there were. Every year, they locked down areas of the engine that you weren't allowed to touch anymore. Because mm-hmm. towards the end, they were all, all the different manufacturers' engines were very close mm. in performance, in right, power, okay. in efficiency, in fuel consumption. Okay, all that they were all very close. So they didn't exactly have tokens, but it, I don't know. It was less confusing. Right. Yeah. So no, it's definitely very confusing. That's part of their argument now for getting rid of them is it's less confusing. You yeah. can just focus on development, all the other confusing yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like right? The politics. So, the politics. <laughs> yeah, who knows? So, I don't know. There's going to be a spending war anyways, but mm. as, I don't know. Especially if they're going to do tire testing, like major tire testing like yeah. Pirelli wants, if they want to power up these cars for 2017 or raise up the downforce mm-hmm. or bring in tires that don't degrade like they're designed to now yeah they have to test new tires so maybe they'll tie tire and engine testing well, together on the weren't track weren't we or? talking about uh i mean it must have been a few podcasts ago but we were talking about how the development of the tires has somehow the size of the tires influenced uh the car in other ways they didn't expect right i, I can't remember exactly what it was their, their idea for 2017 was let's make these cars five seconds faster. Right. So their idea to do that was to boost up the downforce so they can take corners way faster. Don't have to slow down as much. Right. Less acceleration time. You bring the lap time down by up to five seconds. Mm-hmm. But what Pirelli does, is they run these tires at fairly low pressures. Yeah. Uh, these right. tires couldn't, the pressures. couldn't take the stress of cornering at those speeds mm. so without they said without drastically redesigning the tires and changing compounds and the, the cons- underneath construction of them mm-hmm. they'd have to boost the pressure higher than any team wanted and it would negate any the grip gains that the Ugh. downforce would give so they at <sighs> first they talked about a compromise oh, no. of three seconds yeah and then they kind of threw that out and now they're looking at changing all the rules again maybe completely new tires and less downforce overall and the deadline for this decision is march 1st oh okay to lock in the 2017 rules beyond march 1st things can be changed but it requires unanimous consent from every team right wow yeah it's crazy wow that's insane it's craziness but needless to say this year should be extremely interesting Mm mm-hmm that's that's pretty much all the engine engine details we have. I want to talk about Lewis Hamilton today, though. Okay. I've sort of been following this story for a few months now <laughs> and uh, waiting to unveil it. But it might change how you feel about the guy. Oh, really? I'm not sure. Okay, we'll see. Has to, yeah, let's, let's come back in a minute. All right. We'll be right back, guys. One. We're back. All right. This is the Ham Granada. Ham Granada. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Lewis. Probably don't want too many people to know about this. Uh, this story Wait, is... This is a breaking story? <laughs> I wouldn't call it breaking because I think... Well, I, I know. This, this story started on July 7th, 2008. 
Oh my god. Way back. Oh wow. It's sort of been uh, You've done some digging. <laughs> it's sort of been rolling since then. Yeah, I had to I, I had to find some 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 info. There's a handful of characters involved in this story. About four, four okay. main ones. Lewis Hamilton, one of right. them for one. sure. So if you didn't know, his grandfather is from Grenada. Okay. Which is an island in the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think his father, Lewis's father, spent some time growing up there. Mm-hmm. And I think Lewis spent some time as a kid there, sure. probably visiting his grandfather. This also involves this guy here, Dr. Keith Mitchell, who's on your screen. Dr. Keith Mitchell is the the leader of the new national party of Grenada. Mm. He's the former prime minister from 2003 to 2008. Another man, another man named Tillman Thomas. There he is right there. He is the leader of the National Democratic Congress, the opposition party of Grenada. Okay. It also involves a man named Isa Nicholas, Nichols, sorry, who is a Trinidadian businessman, multimillionaire. There he is right there. He's an older gentleman. Hey, bud. And it revolves around the Grand Beach Resort on Ansi Beach, Grand Ansi Beach in Grenada, which is on a bunch of lists of some of the most beautiful beaches in the entire world. Here's some photographs of the resort. This place looks fantastic. It looks incredible look, look, just look at the water yeah look at the water there oh. the beach is white the car is the car is actually mercedes colored <laughs> the mercedes formula one color <gasps> oh my god this it's is a badass a... beach right yeah this whole place i just want to go there so <sighs> this is why everybody's so mad <laughs> <laughs> they have great weather and beaches granada had upset. national elections on july 8th 2008 okay the night before the leader of the new national party who was prime minister at the time Mm -hmm. dr keith mitchell signed a deal with lewis hamilton lewis hamilton owns a company called time burke holdings limited okay time burke holdings one day before the election dr keith mitchell gave to lewis hamilton a freehold contract for the property on which this resort sits on the beach right oh shit so this man dr isa nichols up until then had a 99 year lease that man right there a 99 year lease on the beach Mm -hmm. because this was government owned land Mm -hmm. which the resort sits on he had a 99 year lease to be the tenant of that land keep that resort up and running and the lease agreement excuse me, was a payment of $250,000 a year to okay. the federal government of Grenada. Mm-hmm. Okay? <laughs> so the, the day before the elections, the prime minister gave to Lewis Hamilton the freehold to this property. This man, Isa Nichols, had a lease from the government. Right. He gave the land to Lewis. Oh, my God. The next day, Dr. Keith Mitchell lost the election to Tillman Thomas and the New Democratic Party, who was prime minister. They ruled the country from 2008 until 2012, right? Okay. They're pissed. Yeah, no kidding. They spent that four years because this this man, Dr. Keith Mitchell, promised to the people that he would bring Lewis Hamilton back to Granada. Mm -hmm. He's got his uh, genetics, his roots are from there. Yeah. Bring him back. Part of the deal for giving Time Burke Holdings, which is Lewis Hamilton, yeah, the freehold to the land was in return, Lewis would pay $15 million, East Caribbean dollars, right, which are worth about 30 American cents each, something like that, Okay, in return for four years of promotion of this island, which they don't... The island doesn't have a lot of exports or GDP. They, mm-hmm. they grow spices there. It's one of the spice islands, I guess. Right. They don't have a lot else, and they've been on. They had money problems there, right? As a lot of Caribbean islands do. So, in in Lewis's capacity as a world champion, one of the best drivers in the world, mm-hmm. a Grenada, he would represent his country, big him up, yeah, bring people there, <laughs> big him up. 
part of the deal as well was that Lewis would buy the resort from Isa Nichols. There's the island, yeah. If you want to look on the map, it's in the middle, right in the middle of the Caribbean. This is where it gets interesting. I wouldn't exactly say it's confusing, but it's interesting. Isa Nichols, who had the 99-year lease, whose land was given to Lewis for this in this deal, still owned the hotel there, right? Mm. But he wasn't exactly maintaining it. Part of the deal for Lewis getting this freehold was that the government assumed wrongly that Lewis would buy the resort from this billionaire investor, the Trinidadian, Isa Nichols, yeah. build it up to a five-star status and hire a bunch of locals to work the resort, do the construction, yeah. do the painting, do maintenance, do tourism because people would come there. Mm -hmm. None of that happened. Oh, no. So Lewis paid this man, Isa Nichols, $4 million out of the... the Originally agreed price was forty million dollars, mm -hmm. EC dollars, East Caribbean dollars. Yeah, forty million. Lewis paid him four, as a down payment. Took the freehold of the land from the government, signed yeah. that, and never paid the rest. So he tried to make a last minute deal with this billionaire to get the land cheaper, to mm -hmm. get the resort sorry cheaper, but it didn't happen. It fell through. I said Nichols took the resort gave a lease on the control of the resort to radisson hotels who run it now okay. for him but the problem the problem for the island now the reason the island is pissed is because that was crown land it was government land which was leased to this man who built the resort there right he paid two hundred fifty thousand a year for 99 years to run that mm-hmm the thing is, Lewis Hamilton has the freehold to the land now. So he's been collecting. He believes he is the rightful collector. He's the owner of that land. Yeah. Isa Nichols and Radisson is his tenant. He collects that yearly lease payment now because he owns the land. The government doesn't. So the money so, doesn't go back to the government. Exactly. It, it goes to Lewis Hamilton. Exactly. The people there are kind of pissed. It's a small country. Yeah. They sort of have a lot of sense of community. They Absolutely. support their own. Yeah. Obviously, Formula One, motor racing in general is not big there. No, no. Uh, as, lo as with a lot of the Caribbean islands, big sports there, track and field, mm -hmm. uh, pff, cricket, soccer, basketball. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of them. Yeah. Maybe football, which I get soccer, I guess. Um, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, what what has Lewis Hamilton said anything about this? Yes, he has. Oh, really? Let me take a sip of water. Yeah, it's, this is a big. This is big, man. Well, it's a big story for the island. It's a big story for the character of Lewis Hamilton. Yeah. Or I guess whatever people thought that he was. So, the government under the National Democratic Congress, Tillman Th Thomas. Mm -hmm. The guy who's against Lewis, not the man who sold it, sold the land to right. him, or more or less gave it to him. He took the side of the people and tried to get the land back from Lewis. Lewis then turned around and sued the country. He retained as his lawyer the former attorney general of Granada, who is on his side, obviously, agrees with Lewis. He was the attorney general under the prime minister who sold the land to Lewis. Oh, fuck. His name is Jimmy Bristol. His uh, law firm is called Henry, Henry and Bristol. Lewis, is Hamil Lewis Hamilton's <laughs> law firm. So basically they won Time Burke Holdings. Lewis's company now collects the lease payments from Isa Nichols. And after that was settled in close to the end of 2014 into the start of 2015, Lewis Hamilton opened, well, it was already filed, but he proceeded with a case to have Isa Nichols removed from the property. Like, basically have... The, like GTFO, man. Yeah, basically have wow. the equi equivalent of the Grenadan sheriffs go in, take the keys, lock the doors, lock the fence, and kick, him, kick out the Radisson who works for him. Kick right. him out. Yeah. And 
it's it's shady and it's not, I guess. Yeah. A big part of Lewis's case is that in Granada, for the crown to take back this land, basically, mm-hmm. you have to put notice. You have they have to put notice. They have to put a sign on the property that says this is gonna be expropriated back by the government, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. There should be two signs of notice on the property, mm-hmm. as well as I guess phone calls they have to contact the leaseholder the landowner the freehold owner apparently the government only put one sign there no out instead of the two. Oh no you see that in a big city like here like there's yeah, gonna yeah. knock down a place and put a condo they put a notice there for a few months so people know what's going on yeah this is the the backbone of the case there so that's more or less the story this is ongoing. Grenadans are pissed. Yeah, absolutely. The country is pissed. Interestingly, the, the new national party, the sorry, the party which gave Lewis the freehold, yeah, is back in power, right? They they won the election again. They re won the election back in 2012 towards the end of the year. Okay, so they're back in party, back in power, and uh, I guess part of that was this Dr. Keith Mitchell who. Yeah gave the land away which everyone's mad about yeah his a big part of his campaign was that if he was elected if the people gave him power that he was gonna lure lewis hamilton back to the island to represent granada again and boost up this resort look at the resort again though it is really beautiful it's really it's nice. kind of insane yeah but i guess you can actually is this it Beach. I didn't bring any links here, but if you want to look it up, like you can see like some Yelp reviews and stuff that it needs maintenance work, which yeah. was part of this deal was Lewis was supposed to go there, you know, like replace the broken sinks, I guess, paint the walls, yeah. bring it back up to standard, like like just like any building, it deteriorates. But it's oh. extremely beautiful. But something you notice out of all these pictures is there's no people in them. No. Well, there's, there's two people there's here. two it's... people there, but... Oh, you could just Photoshop them in, right? So, <laughs> yeah, no, it's eerily empty. Yeah. So, as it stands right now, I believe that the well, I know the the Radisson is still running the hotel. Mm-hmm. I believe under Isa Nichols, who's still there. Uh, I don't think the case to remove Isa Nichols has been settled, but Lewis is getting those lease payments. Mm-hmm. He paid four million as a down payment which he lost mm-hmm. but he's collecting you know quarter million a year so i guess he's just gonna keep fighting and who knows but even if he wins this case why would he show his face back there everyone's yeah. everyone's gonna be pissed right yeah, all the, all the granadans I, <laughs> right right I, I just don't even know what to say to this sort of like yeah you know if the idea was just to if this was like some sort of investment which it was. Which it much. was. Yeah. Which it still can be. But Why wouldn't you put some money... Like, if this is not... Like, if this is sort of your second home, right, where your family comes from, would you not uh, actually want to invest it? Because it's beautiful. It's fucking super nice. It I, is. It's, it's so nice. But this part of the argument was Lewis paid Isa Nichols, the guy who owns the, the buildings there, four out of 40 million a 10 percent down payment yeah and then tried to negotiate him down and said that's too much money it's 40 million east caribbean dollars right so actually if you convert it here i which i've done that it works out to 14 million us dollars oh shit so really lewis at this point he's really only put about one and a half to two million U.S. dollars into this mm-hmm. for a gigantic beachfront property in the Caribbean Sea, yeah. which is national one of National Geographic's most beautiful beaches, the most the top beach in Granada. Yeah, it's amazing. Plus the resort, which he's gonna win. You yeah. see that Isa Nichols guy is probably like eighty years old. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. He's ancient. He's ancient. Apparently a tough negotiator. Yeah, no kidding. But. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I guess Lewis got nothing but time, right? He's only thirty. Yeah. So I guess he he can uh, afford he to push this back wants. a little bit. Yeah. 
So I don't know. We'll keep following this. That's this. This has been playing out anyways for eight eight years now. It's 2016. Oh, okay. Nine okay. years, I guess. So well, I guess when this first years. started out, he didn't have that much money. Yeah, That's, not not uh, like now he does that, now. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. He just got, yeah, well, he was just at the beginning of the episode. basically like his second year of F one. Mm-hmm. He was getting paid though. Yeah, yeah. He's getting paid. <laughs> he was getting paid. He could afford that island, that yeah. island resort, anyways. Good God. Crazy story, right? Yeah, no, that's insane. I don't know. I I've it. I've loved this guy. I've been following his career since he got into F one, yeah. since he started. One of the top drivers, one of my favorite guys, a great character. But I don't know. I in a way he's it's in, somewhat shady. In a lot of ways, actually, he's in the right. Yeah. The government gave him the land. He signed a freehold. Yeah. He bought the freehold. I don't know. Judge for yourself, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Judge, for, judge for yourself sleep on it <laughs> yeah, i guess they're all sleeping on it <laughs> sleeping on the white beaches <laughs> <laughs> beautiful beautiful anyways let's let's finish this off with the, st- the stupid stories of the week all right what do we got danny well uh, we can uh, cut it let's okay let's cut it let's do it separate let's do it separate my the, favorite part of the show the odd bits the silly bits, the, the silly stupid bits. shit. Especially, it's my favorite part this week. Anyways. <laughs> so, we just spent uh, 20 minutes ragging on Lewis Hamilton yep. for his uh, unscrupulous business practices in the Caribbean, in his home country. Well, poor um, poor Grenadans, yeah. fucked out of their favorite beach. They deserve better. We all know, what we talked about earlier, Rosberg, I guess his plan for this year is to get under Lewis's skin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think a lot of people know that these two guys, Lewis and Rosberg, yeah. they've been racing together since they were like seven years old or since eight. We since lads. Go karting, right? <laughs> they've always been go karting, always been competing, always been challenging each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I found this clip. Actually, I found these next two clips random. Just, just randomly. Just sort of like synchronicity. They sort of like lined up. Uh, this is from I don't know like a month or two ago. Lewis, remember we did a sort of a segment about Lewis was doing a bunch of U.S. press, yeah, getting on a bunch of talk shows and that's right, picking himself up once he won the championship. This is from the Chris Hardwick show. Uh, just hit, hit play. You'll, you'll know when to stop. Just just for a piece. Uh, yeah, just dude. listen. No, someone listen stole listen mine. Did you steal my unicycle? Someone literally hit? legit stole my unicycle. Yes. yes. I think we live in different era codes, man. <laughs> Did you guys you, you can unicycle? Well, I, when I was casting, um, there was this other kid that did it, and he, everyone was focusing on him. I was, I was like, I can do that. Uh, not like Lewis to be so, competitive. I didn't, really, to I, don't, I didn't really do it around town or anything. I just, yeah. I just did it so oh, I could It's such a shame him. we didn't get a unicycle down here, isn't it? It's a good thing. Or did we? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so if you're wondering who that kid might have been that he saw doing it around when he was a kid that everyone was paying attention to, Chris Hardwick just busted out a unicycle. Thank you. He was going to try to get Lewis to uh, show off. Yeah, yeah, go, on, yeah go on, have a go. It's when did you unicycle. last? When did you last unicycle? Know, I guess you can stop this in the he, he can do it. He rides the unicycle back and forth. I get him a go. 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 Give him a go. Uh, oh, down the stairs. Get, he gets away from the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, the interesting point was like, oh, you could ride a unicycle. He said, ah, there was this kid when I was young doing it and getting a lot of attention, right? Yeah. So separately, you go to this next video here. I was watching. I had this on when I was eating breakfast the other day. Just watching some F1 stuff on YouTube. Yeah. It's titled Formula One Driver Training in Monaco. And just sort of like a five five minute thing. <clears throat> it follows uh, Nico Rosberg around his day. Mm-hmm. Goes to the gym. Goes for a jog with his trainer. Does some cycling. Play the next season. Extremely tough to drive an F1 car. Um, with a fuel tank right behind you getting up to 70, <laughs> 80 degrees. Um, and, and also the outside temperatures sometimes go up to 40 degrees centigrade. And so it's in those races where it becomes especially tough. I mean, it really is torture in the end, where you still need to be super focused. That's where the fitter drivers wow. have an advantage. Right. Over those so drivers so for the listeners, uh, we just like overheard with narration a clip of Nico Rosberg in his backyard riding a unicycle while juggling. Wow. While juggling. I didn't see I didn't see Lewis Hamilton doing that. No, I don't think he was juggling. I don't no. think he can do that. No, they had to get another guy to do it. Chris to get another... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So 
for the title card of our show, for, I guess for the for the viewers on YouTube, you've seen all our thumbnails. We do a little pictures of the week and throw them up for the uh, the thumbnail of the video. I just typed into Google Images Lewis Hamilton unicycle. Yeah. Look what came up. Oh. There's a picture of some uh, teenagers, Lewis Hamilton and <laughs> Rosberg, each riding unicycles together. Look at this. They got their arms around each Aww, other. Ah, this is so nice. You could it's tell like it's... Rosberg is just like, I don't want to be here. Do you tell it's <laughs> mid-90s? It's not a digital photograph. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was interesting. It is pretty interesting. Especially there was with, I love how Hamilton was just like, oh yeah, there was just like some kid that was doing it. It was Nico. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely him. Yeah, he's getting all this attention. He's getting all this attention. He's like, I can do that and I can do it better. <laughs> I don't know why he turned Australian. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, there's there's the two of them on the That's cycles. So funny. So um there's a good argument a good uh story for the argument that possibly nico could get under his skin all he's got to do is show up in australia with a unicycle four tennis balls <laughs> just juggling yeah and just show him up <laughs> lewis can bust out his unicycle but yeah he can't juggle at the same time right and uh lewis hamilton of course non-stop with the tweets and instagrams yeah look at this guy uh non-stop obsession with america yeah he is he is over for the uh, super bowl there's a picture of him with the tweet hashtag or something super bowl 50 in the presence of greatness wow i don't know who most of those dudes are except for lewis and jay-z in the middle uh, <laughs> well we all know why jay-z was there right yes beyonce beyonce <laughs> oh why wh- was she at the super bowl yeah she was singing oh uh, I, I, I didn't even I watch know. i just saw pictures on the internet <laughs> That's weird. i scrolled some of the comments which they're fairly obvious what they might be. Why are you trying to act hard? <laughs> how come you? How come you're not smiling? Him, him and Jay Z are the only ones not smiling. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's too funny. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. Look, look at Lewis being all tough. Yeah, like, Everybody yeah, else is yeah, like, yeah. oh, I'm, like, yeah, I'm having a great hanging time. out at the Super Bowl party, having yeah. fun. There's like someone's kid yeah, Jay-Z's is there. Jay Z's got like like a little smirk on. Yeah, he's smiling too. <laughs> Lewis is the only one. <laughs> anyways anyways cool um yeah so another i don't know this is uh i don't know this is the time of year everyone's like all these drivers are prepping prepping Mm -hmm. for the races a lot of them if you look at their twitters and whatever there's a lot of photographs of them exercising or doing strange types of exercises absolutely bicycling weird bikes or like extreme conditions here's a tweet i made i don't know a week or two ago we talked about this this is um rosberg's torture chamber oh he straps on a helmet which is strapped to some ropes which are attached to weights which are attached to pulleys and then he uses his neck to lift all these weights. That's insane. Something cope, I've been noticing about Formula the, One drivers is their necks. Like if you look at Alonso, like it's just like it's like a brick. It's just like this cylinder right there. I'm glad you said that. Go to go to the next picture here because this is I just saved the picture, but this was from an Instagram of Max Verstappen doing a similar type of exercise with his neck. Jeez. It's kind of weird. For the listeners, he's got his head on a weight bench he's got his body on the floor he's balancing on one knee and he's kind of got his body weight floating on his neck so oh. you can see he's just kind of like basically lifting his body almost doing push-ups with his neck yeah Ugh. go to this next clip here for a second i'm not gonna say anything you can play the sound That was a walnut. <laughs> that was a walnut. Oh my God! Alonzo just cracked yeah, a walnut on his neck. Yeah, you can find this also. This is an older video. It must be from early two thousands. I just came across it because yeah. I was typing like Formula One necks and googling <laughs> go, googling the F one necks. This is it's a, a video of Danny. <laughs> look at Alonzo's neck. Look at that again. Look how big it is. He just so I, I can barely do a walnut, you know, you do the palms, yeah, yeah. palms together like a like you do like a grip. Look at his neck, man. Boom. Oh, it, 
Crack it was so walnut. effortless. He was just. <laughs> yeah, like you gotta either. I usually gotta step on him and put put yeah. my my shoulder weight. I throw him on a table. Wall. Doesn't right. really work. <laughs> one of the one dudes have some necks. Wow. That was, that was. They that was got that. some interesting like body shapes. Like they're like yeah. fairly thin, but their necks are just like these fucking. You gotta be, yeah, they gotta be super poles. as skinny as possible. Yeah, but a huge neck. Wow, them G forces. And uh, finally, we we showed that video a week or two ago. I'm sure everyone saw it. Of uh, they took a the Red Bull F1 car, s- set it up to a rack that a rugby team would practice their scrimmaging on you know you've seen those heavy racks and they sort of push it across the field mounted it to the front of an f1 car pushed pushed the pedal to the metal what uh what kind of tires do you think uh the f1 i think those are regular f1 tires really just i'm surprised it got that much of a grip though yeah anyways we looked at this a few weeks ago, but they've now since put out a thermal video of it, which is pretty badass. You can see that the team is obviously sweating. One guy's not even trying, he's just kind of watching. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, you get it. You see all that wow. heat on the F1 car, though. So basically, the F1 car is burning out, the tires are spinning, and there are about 10 rugby players holding it back. They're actually pushing it backwards. Wow. They actually, yeah, that would... Those guys got some necks. <sighs> There's something about rugby players, man. They're just insane. Look at that guy's neck in the middle there. Oh, He's a rugby player. Look Jeez. at this. This is, this is too much. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, finally, <clears throat> that's it for the, the small stories. The Canadian International Auto Show for you Torontonians, car lovers, Americans close to the border, starts mm. on Friday. Starts on Friday. Flat Out Fever has obtained media passes that's right for the for the auto show we'll, so we'll be there tweet at us if you had any questions for f1 related manufacturers that's what we're going to be there for yeah aston martin's going to be there honda's going to be there nissan's going to be there yeah let us know if uh, you guys want us to check out some stuff we'll we'll let you know about it honda's going to be there with the nsx we'll see what sort of uh, f1 technologies or vice versa they've got but we'll be there on Thursday doing some real reporting, I suppose. Ooh, real reporting. Oh, my Ooh, God. I can deal with that. And as well, we'll be back next Tuesday. Hopefully, Jay's not throat or stomach or whatever he's sick death. with will uh, heal itself, get better. <laughs> and I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my first day being 30. Yeah, cool. All right, everybody. Thanks All right. for listening. See you guys. Happy F1. <laughs> Thank you.